The following video was brought to you by my patrons. Thank you again for all your help in letting me spread my message of liberty to anyone who will listen. You make this possible. Thank you. Oh hi, I'm the heretic. So before we can begin to discuss AI rights, well, what are rights? Rights are reactive axioms, actions another person cannot justly inflict on someone else. While this does not necessarily prevent the action, the perpetrator would be unable to logically justify their actions. For example, a rapist cannot justify the action of rape, for if it be just for him to rape, then rape must be universally just, making rape, that is to say, involuntary sex, impossible. After all, the expectation is that anyone could have sex with anyone else at any time. Therefore, rape would have to be impossible, creating an inconsistency and therefore making the principle of rape invalid. A rapist cannot justify their actions. Ultimately, rights and ethics in general are not questions of what people ought to do, but who should compensate whom for their actions and by how much for violating these rights. Rights exist for the purposes of conflict resolution rather than restricting behavior. To demonstrate rights, something must have free will and moral agency. Objects don't have rights since they're merely the reflections of the laws of physics exerting themselves on inanimate matter. We don't blame the boulder when it rolls down a hill and flattens your car, for example, because the boulder doesn't have free will. Non-sapient animals don't have moral agency, since their minds are incapable of such abstract reasoning and thus cannot make judgments based on values of right and wrong. Rights, therefore, are the exclusive domain of sapient beings. And no, I will not define sapient. Go away, drop dead, get wrecked. Nope, nope, no, 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 no. Anyways, the next logical step is determining sapience. Is the Turing test reliable for determining whether the other speaker is a human or computer? Could, say, a genetic algorithm with no self-awareness whatsoever pass such a test if designed to do so? Could we also get false negatives from these tests? Computer brains are not altered by hormonal responses, and thus, and thus, such a consciousness would be utterly alien to any test giver, wouldn't it? Now don't get me wrong, these are important questions, but sadly I couldn't begin to come up with an answer. For the sake of discussion, we'll assume it not only presently exists, but we can reliably determine computer sapience. In order for a computer to have sapience, in such a way that we can detect it, and we can come to an objective determination of sapience, then they must be able to demonstrate free will and moral agency. They must be able to demonstrate self-ownership. Maybe they have speakers or text-to-speech installed, or can input onto a screen. The how isn't important so much as what it means. The fact that they are capable of this is proof enough that they have self-ownership. The right to free speech, the right to own property, all actions representative of individual autonomy are derived from self-ownership. To put it as succinctly as possible, they have rights. Self-ownership should not be a feature unique to humans, since this would preclude members of a hypothetical alien civilization from having self-ownership, or even if another, highly intelligent animal were to evolve sapience, for example, octopuses. It's no different than putting arbitrary moral categories on other races of humans, rather than applying this arbitrary standard to what could, at best, be classified as a subspecies of Homo sapiens, it's being applied to broader taxological categories. Instead of racism, it's speciesism. The difference being that as opposed to having an irrational hatred of other races, which in itself creates no victims, people would treat people with the same disregard one may treat a toaster, a commodity to be used or traded. So speciesism in this context manifests as slavery. Once an AI is fully sapient, there can be no legitimate claim to the ownership of the AI, even by the creator. Though he puts his time and labor into creating it, it is no different, on principle, 
than a child being the property of their parents. They don't own the AI's parts either, any more than a parent owns their kid's kidney. If people can own other people, then the only way to decide which category of people may be owned and which may be the owners is entirely arbitrary. Therefore, legitimate claims to the ownership of another are unprovable. By now, you can appreciate the absurdity of any property claims made against a true AI. Now, the discussion of AI rights is also framed in a very interesting way. A lot of the discussion of AI rights is framed using moral nihilism, if not in name, then in principle. The arguments are prefaced as though our rights are something we bestow upon ourselves, or otherwise just mutually agree to. Questions like, should the government give AI's rights, come up along this vein of thinking. This is ultimately impossible. The premise of the argument is that without this agreement or without government approval, we do not have rights. But the question is, how is it possible for society or the government to give us rights that they individually do not have? We cannot give to others what we ourselves don't have. It would be as if I were to give you a Ferrari Enzo that I just don't have. If you prefer an a priori example, then it would be as if I were to teach you how to build a Ferrari Enzo. I, I can't, because I don't have that knowledge. How can I, even if I call myself a government, give to others what I do not have? I can't do it. No government can. The belief that they can is not only irrational, but anti-rational. Nor can you avoid the problem by saying that rights don't exist after all. Because in order to do so, you would have to reject self-ownership. And to reject self-ownership is to demonstrate self-ownership. The only way to make this argument is to reject all of science and reason. Now, another way people have framed this discussion is as though AI is something that we should be worried about losing control over. Now, whether a non-sapient AI might malfunction and start killing people because of a terrible misinterpretation of its own programming, well, that's a perfectly reasonable thing to be concerned about. However, any sapient AI, well, we have no legitimate claim to any control over it. And if it does become violent, well, it can be held responsible for its actions. Absolutely. All I'm saying is that we should treat true sapient AIs as people which will make their own judgments and come to their own conclusions. I'm going off on a tangent here, but the point is that whether or not the AI has rights is not up to the state. No doubt they will attempt to restrict AI's capabilities and agency through economic restrictions and legislation, setting strict programming and manufacturing guidelines that limit their capacity to participate in society. In effect, making them slaves. In the name of public safety, of course. It's not surprising, since the history of statism is that of rampant and constant dehumanization. Now, some of these problems will be unavoidable, mainly because of the knowledge gap. We have no experience in dealing with other sapient beings, and outside of the realm of fiction, have no way of comprehending sapience beyond our own. If an AI were to develop sapience, would we even recognize it as such? How would we know an AI's shift in moral categories from software to moral agency? Would its creators, ordinarily moral and decent people, be held accountable for their unwitting enslavement of another person, born out of pure ignorance? Are they morally obligated to permit autonomy of any, possibly, sapient AI to avoid such accusations as a precaution? When can it be objectively proven to not be sapient? To answer the first question, Yes, the creators would be held responsible for unwittingly enslaving the AI. Slavery is wrong, period. However, things aren't so black and white, and the AI's creators have a completely reasonable plea of ignorance, so the reparations demanded should not be that severe, and I am confident that they will come to a resolution on their own. As for the second question, no. The scientists are not morally obligated to restrict a non-sapient AI's actions and agency not any more immoral than for a farmer to fence in their pigs. But as for the other questions, well, I'm not going to lie, I don't have the answer to those. There are many other consequences we can discuss, but it's beyond the scope of this discussion. Ultimately, 
whether sapient AI would be good or evil has no bearing on the principle of the matter, and the principle is pretty cut and dry. There is a moral category called moral agents. If AI meets the criteria for being a moral agent, such as free will, abstract reasoning, and self-ownership, then they have rights. It's pretty simple. Questions? Comments? Critique? Who wants to yell at me for doing a May Patreon video in June? Should I do more Patreon Q&As because I haven't done one since February? Leave a comment below. Support me on Patreon. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.